Welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at this thing here. Now, this is a NerdCam 3D Mark II camera. Now, this is a camera that's actually going to capture two images, which is why it has two cameras on here, and then transmit them down to a 3D capable set of goggles or ground station, so you can then view the image in glorious 3D. Now, I have to say a very big thank you to getfpv.com. These guys are the ones that sent us these to give us a try with. I've been waiting for ages to try and get my hands on a camera like this. And Fat Shark, I believe, have been trying to develop a 3D camera, but it hasn't come to market yet. So this seems to be the one that a lot of people are using. And what I wanted to do in this camera was go through all of the bits and pieces around it, talk about how 3D works, and then actually put these onto something, pop the coggles on and give them a try and tell you what I think of them. Now, the first thing to talk about here is that there are lots and lots of different ways that you can get 3D from the craft down into your eyes. And we're gonna cover those first because this camera supports pretty much most of them. So before we go any further, if you'd like to know more about the camera, there's a link down in the description. Go and have a look at these things, and then let's jump on very quickly and talk about the different kinds of 3D and how it actually works. You'll have noticed that those cameras are pretty far apart on the NerdCam 3D, and there's a reason for that. The closer they are to the actual distance between your eyes, the more convincing the 3D effect will be. Now, the most basic version of 3D is that you have a left camera and a right camera, which is what we have in the NerdCam, and they then transmit two separately captured images into each respective eye to give you that 3D view. You don't need anything apart from the two images in front of each of the eye for the 3D to work. You don't need polarized glasses, you don't need any colored lenses or anything. Now, the cool thing here is that the NerdCam 3D, if we go back to the desk, actually has a set of dip switches at the front and you can decide how you want the NerdCam 3D to work. Because in a second we'll talk about the three different ways that you commonly get 3D and for the two main ones where you're actually trying to combine each of these cameras into one image for transmission the nerd cam will allow you to do it and allow you to set them via these dip switches and then you also have these little things at the outside these kind of little bumps that actually also allow you to adjust the image as it's coming down into the goggles as well so that you can use them with things like the Dominator V3s. Now we looked at the Dominator V3 goggles a while ago and uh, they do support 3D but side by side 3D. So let's have a look at what the different types are because you need to be making sure that the, any camera that you get for 3D is supporting the same type of 3D as your goggles are. So the first kind of 3D is one that's pretty straightforward. What you have is essentially two cameras and two video transmitters, both transmitting at the same time using a different frequency. And on the 3D goggles, you have two aerials. And those two antennas are then picking up each of those and then displaying each of those FPV signals in the corresponding little screen in front of each of your eyes. Now, this is a really cute way of doing it. It means that you don't have to have specialist things like a NerdCam 3D in order for this to work. You can use standard cameras. You just have to mount them about the same distance as your eyes apart. You might have to play with how they're actually pointing out to make sure that the images overlap perfectly. But once you've got that set up, it'll work great. Really nice thing is here is you don't have any extra electronics between the transmitter and the receiver. The image is transmitted normally as you would for any FPV setup. It just happens that there's two running side by side to give you both of the images for each of your eyes. The next way that we can do it is to do it by side by side. Now this is the way that the Fat Shark Dominator V3 goggles work and this is the default mode that the NerdCam 3D is working in. Now I doesn't actually color the images so you can see here on the left we have a left camera as a green and a right camera as a red. I've just done that so I can show you how the images are combined. But the way it works is that each of those cameras takes the image, the video that's running, and what happens is there's some clever electronics in the middle that then takes both of those frames of video, compresses them horizontally, puts them side by side into one frame of video, and then transmits that down to the goggles. Once the goggles has got that, it then separates those two images, uncompresses them, and puts them in front of your left and right eye. 
Now the really nice thing about that is you only need one video transmitter and one video receiver so you don't need additional frequencies or receivers or separate antennas or have to worry about those frequency problems. It, you can use it with your existing setup the challenge is, is that you do sacrifice a little bit of horizontal resolution because there's only so many pixels you can send horizontally and you have to split them between the left and right image. Other way to do it then, which again the NerdCam supports, is to have something called interlaced. And this works in almost exactly the same way as side by side. And this time what you do is you can alternate the fields in the video image between the left and the right camera. Again, it doesn't colour the image like this, I'm just using it to hopefully show you how it does it. And then on the ground side, what it does is the goggles then unpick the left and right image out of that interlaced frame that's come down from the video transmitter and then puts them in front of your left and right eye. So those are the most common ways that you do it. If we go back for a second and just look at the one that we'll be using with our Fat Shark Dominators, we're going to use the side by side. The manual that comes in this, and let's just talk about what you get in the box. It's a huge box for this, so it's very well packed. You get the Nerd Cam itself. You get a really good manual, actually, that's really, really well written that talks about how you do all the adjustments and change everything. And you also get what looks like a spare enclosure for the actual camera itself. The only connections that you have here at the back, there are four. If I actually show you upside down slightly, just trying to get the light on here, is you have the ground and the 3D image video out, and then you have a ground and five volts in. So the way it says is it's better to have a separate ground for each of them, but you can just use these little connector blocks here to plug in the cables from your video transmitter for your five volts, your ground, and your video as well. Apart from that, the only things you're going to play with are going to be these dip switches at the front. Those allow you to select the mode that you're in and also allow you to do a couple of other bits and bobs as well. It's all covered in the manual. And then these buttons here allow you to move the image left and right. Now the image itself, the way it works, particularly with the Dominator V3s, there's a the little feature in those where you might have to move that image. So if you imagine that you have half of the board is the right image and half of the board is the left image, the goggles might not be reading the separation that's coming down from the nerd cam exactly right. So you might get a bit of the left image in your right eye or vice versa. And what you can do is you can adjust the, on the nerd cam to make sure that the separation is absolutely perfect. Okay, enough talking about it. Let's look at how we're gonna wire this up to an FPV transmitter, plug it into the camera and get it all working. I very quickly connected the camera to the FPV video transmitter. So here is one of my favorite FPV flying quads, which believe it or not, is just a simple little CC3D and a fat shark transmitter here at the back. We have the camera at the front of the model here. So I'll just move the, um, these are the Fat Shark Dominator V3 goggles that we're going to be using. Uh, to put them into 3D mode, you just simply uh, press this button here until it says 3D. The model itself, I made a little 3D stand here just to pop it into, holding it in place with a cable tie. Um, it's actually on what is normally the Mobius mount, and that should hopefully mean that it's reasonably vibration free. Then we have the connections on the top, which we have the plus five volts, the black wire and the yellow wire, which is signal, and that's going into our FPV transmitter at the back. Now this cable that I've used to connect it to the FPV transmitter is one that you get in all of these Fat Shark things when you get them. You always get this cable that plugs into the Fat Shark transmitter and has these five cores on, uh, plus five volts, black, video, and then audio and other bits and pieces as well. And that is normally not useful for anything, but it's perfect for this, because all I've done is just pop them into the connections here at the top. There we go, just gently tighten down here and we're all ready to go. Now if I show you what the video out of this actually looks like, here you can see the left and right hand sides. And again, what we're looking at here is side by side 3D, which is what the Fat Shark Dominator V3 goggles like. So we have the left image on the left hand side and the right hand image on the right hand side. And in the manual in section 4.4, 
it actually talks about having the offset adjustment here for the squeeze side by side and I had to do this a little bit because my fat sharks weren't picking up the middle of the image exactly so once I did that then the image kind of jumped out and it started to look like 3D so now we've got it on the craft here the next thing for us to do is let's take it out in the field and give it a fly so finally here in the UK we're starting to get some better weather so as you can see it's a bright sunny slightly overcast day but we're going to have a quick little flight and see how it looks. Now it did take me a little bit of time using the adjustments on the goggles to get the 3D to look natural in my eyes and it does look almost 3D so as I look through the two goggles it almost looks like there is a box behind them that I'm looking into that's giving me depth of field. I'm used to flying my Dominator V3s with the Fat Shark 169 camera that gives me a wide aspect ratio and also gives me a fantastic amount of clarity. Now this image here of course with YouTube I can't give you an idea of what the 3D is like. This is just the recording directly from the DVR in the goggles but you can see that the camera's doing a pretty good job except for the default exposure balance which is aggregated across the entire image and if you were finding that it was overcooking and overexposing a little bit you can actually change that so it is only using the bottom half of the image which should be where your ground is to set the exposure level but it's coping very well in these nice bright light conditions. In the goggles it does look 3D. The challenge that I'm having flying like this is normally, as anyone who's seen my other videos will know, I tend to fly underneath some of these goalposts and with the resolution that I'm sacrificing to get the 3D effect uh, with the goggles that I'm using here, the dominators, then I'm struggling to get that pinpoint accuracy that I'm used to with another camera. However, saying that, that doesn't mean that with other goggles and with other setups, it's not going to be a little bit clearer, but it's absolutely fine to fly with. But would I necessarily fly through these through very close, tight environments? I probably wouldn't. In terms of lag, I can't feel any discernible lag. I'm feeling very connected to the model and everything seems to be happening in real time. So if there is a small delay with the NerdCam version 2 3D camera, I can't feel it in my normal flying style. So in summary, definitely something you should look at. Now these are relatively expensive cameras. Do go and have a look at them and thanks again to getfpv.com for sending us these to try. Really good fun but for close in fast flying I'd probably use something else but if you're going to be flying above grand vistas and you want that third dimension then these are definitely worthwhile taking a look at. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.